My name is Ted Cox. Uh, the class today uh, for the virtual summit, Christmas summit 2023, is mapping submodels between different models. Mapping submodels between different models uh, simply means that uh, I am going to show you how you can uh, create submodels or create submodel groups uh, so that when you map a new uh, sequence in, uh, or and you have a new prop that doesn't necessarily match what the sequencer has provided you. Uh, you can create submodels that will match the image that the sequencer was going for on his prop so that you can match it to your prop. Uh, and as a third year user and a first year uh, uh, with a high definition prop, I was excited to learn how to use some cross mapping for my sequences uh, because I had never had a sequence and I bought a prop that's uh, fairly new in high density. Uh, and uh, uh, I didn't have any sequences that matched up to it. So uh, my name is Ted Cox. I live in Punta Gorda. Um, I've been uh, blinking lights for three years now. Uh, first year about 2,800 lights and Last year was 36. This year is going to be about 53. Uh, biggest thing I added this year was a bunch of spinners. Um, I did seven of them with a spinner, a big spinner in the center. Uh, what do I do? What do I like to do besides lights? Uh, I built uh, and fight combat robots in the eastern United States. I build one pound and three pound robots uh, like battle bots you see on TV, only smaller versions. Um, and uh, we have a lot of fun with that. I take my grandson around and we uh, fight and have a good time. Uh, name something awesome that no one else knows about you. I've uh, last 27 years, I've built uh, a couple of retirement communities here in Punta Gorda, and uh, I was able to do that with my parents, and I had a very enjoyable uh, career here in Punta Gorda for the last 25 years. So anyway, oops, that's for later. So let's start with uh, X lights. What I did was uh, because I have a prop and you can see it right there, uh, that's my high definition prop. Uh, and I, when I wanted to sequence it, I didn't have anything to, 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 to compare it to for my sequences. Uh, I, I'm a mapper, I'm not a sequencer. So I joined PPD the first year in my, uh, my hobby. And I got a bunch of sequences for them. Um, great sequencing. I enjoy their product very much. Um, I since then have shared everybody. I buy from uh, RGB and from uh, Extreme and from uh, Showstoppers and from uh, Joe and from uh, Pixel Pro and uh, for Pixel Display, Pixel Sequencing and all the other guys. Uh, everybody out there does a tremendous job sequencing. Uh, but unfortunately, not everybody carries every prop that you can sequence to. So what I was faced with was uh, trying to find something. So what I'm going to do today is uh, I'm going to import. Um, this is the Infinity Spinner from Charlie's Props. And I went there this morning. I reached out, said, you know, I'm going to throw just throw one on here. I don't not have it in my layout now. I'm going to throw it on here. We're going to create some submodels. We're going to throw it in a sequence and see what it looks like. So that's my goal today of the uh, of the group. So when I first started this, I decided I'm going to have a play show. So in my, under my controller, I just established a, a temporary sequence and I put in the uh, necessary folders to get a show folder started and I named it play show. And in that play show, I downloaded all the various spinners that I could see in the sequences of the ones that I had purchased from the various sequencers. And uh, of course, you can see now these are the, the PPD uh, wreath, the GE uh, Baby of All wreaths, the Mother of All wreaths, the Rosa Grand, the Rosa wreath, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, and I tried primarily st stayed with the spinners. I didn't want the snowflakes and, uh, you know, the variety of other spinners. So today, I'm going to bring this one in. So I'm going to... Uh, it's not in the uh, download or I couldn't find it there. So I'm going to create a new download. I'm going to go to my downloads folder. I got it right here. I'll throw it in there. All right. So now let's move it back here so we can see it. 
and let me throw it. Oops. Yeah, too far there. Thought I put it right there. All right, that's three feet. That's close. Three feet, that's close. That's got to go back some. All right, that's close. Okay, so now I have a uh, uh, imported a new prop into my, um, uh, and we're going to call it the infinity uh, spinner. I don't know why it's showstopper, but we'll name that. Okay. So now the next thing I'm going to do is, um, if you'll see up here in my sequences, and the way to, sh to shortcut this a little bit was if you pull out a sequence and if you import one, there will be a number of submodels created uh, in that sequence. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here. So let's go to our downloads folder and down here to Pentronics. And we'll lay this one out. Uh, oh my God. Uh, yeah. Oh no, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that either. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Jeez. Okay. I got sequences with I got sequences with no music. All right, so let's throw some music in it then. Okay, let's let it uh, finish uh, rendering. I'm going to suspend render for now. We're going to open this up. Uh, we need to bring that uh, prop in that we just uh, put in the infinity spinner over into our layout. We're going to keep it separate and we're just going to move it up a little bit so we can see it. Okay, so now what I did was, uh, if you see anytime you import the sequences, you come up here and you'll say, okay, I've got a PPD center wreath piece. And uh, if you look, I'm going to turn this uh, to 3D off for a second so I can zoom in on this. But that's the wreath or that's my, my, my center point. And if you'll see that we have uh, just the center pieces of the wreath lit. So I want to find now a submodel group in this wreath that would offer me that same look. So I'm going to open up the submodels of the uh, donor <laughs> spinner, if you will. And I'm going to take a look and see all the different types of submodels that this new Infinity Spinner offers. And there's an awful lot of them. And some of them look the same as the same other configurations of other spinners, but they use different terminology. And that you'll find that in all the different manufacturers of the Coro guys. Uh, they all name something different. There are some swirl, some are internal swirl, some are uh, dog leg, some are twist. Uh, so you'll just see a different, a lot of different nomenclature when you're uh, when you're doing this. So you just kind of got to ignore that and pay more attention to the shapes and the position of the pixels. Uh, that's more important to us right now. So what I did here was then I said, okay, well, if I see this in this configuration, 
And I think these center rings can take care of these positions. And then I see a couple of uh, small dots uh, around that perimeter. Well, I don't see any other rings that are going to provide me that. I think uh, the, the next ring here is probably going to go too far outside. Yeah. So I could have these lit. Oops. I could have that, that one lit, but it's going to be too far from the center. Going to too far per, protrude out here. So I don't want to do that one. So I'm going to use center rings, though. So what I'll do now is that in this group over here that we have marked the PPD wreath centerpiece, we're going to come down here to our submodels and we're going to come down into the affinity and we're looking for the center rings, that one. And we're going to move that to the right or add that into our model, the submodel group, if you will. So that submodel group has the showstopper spinner center and it also has the infinity spin spinner center rings and that is equivalent to the ppd wreath center piece make sense so then the next one we do is just one more down click it we then search over here to find the center rings they're going to match those center rings we already know that it's the center rings for the infinity Go right down here, grab the center rings, move it to the right, and that one's done. And the purpose of doing this, guys, is that so when the next time you go to map and you bring in your mapping to, to the a particular sequence, when you drag your uh, effect uh, or drag that prop to that, your prop, or those effects to your prop, you're already issuing it into the submodels so that it'll already pick up the effects that the sequence are intended. So let's keep going. We got uh, center spiral clockwise. So I know that uh, that is the inner twist left. And if I bring it up here, uh, we can see that here if we zoom out. And we'll see, move this around a little bit here once again. We'll probably have to reset it now. Yeah, there it is, okay. All right, so those are the ones that we're trying to match. You can see the swirl is to the left. It matches these. So we're going to say inner twist left is equal or equivalent to the uh, center clockwise spir uh, spiral. Or clockwise spiral, excuse me. <laughs> Counterclockwise, yeah. So infinity uh, twist left. These are all in alphabetical order as you go through them, so they're usually fairly easy to find. Uh, inner twist left, Ted. There it is. And we just drag it over. So now that we have a prop now that looks similar to the one that this one is offering to us, we can go to the next one. And we know this one would be the right one. So this one is the infinity uh, inner right twist. So, and again, that you can verify that by going here to the right twist, but we already kind of know that it's clockwise. All right, now the di diamond arms. Diamond arms present a little bit more of a challenge because the showstopper spinner did not really have something that matched up really well to that. And I used the Trident for that. Uh, I thought they, they matched up better, but we're lucky here that uh, the uh, Infinity that we uh, just downloaded does have some diamond arms. And uh, so we're going to just throw those in there. We know what they're going to look like. That's the that's them as they go around in their spiral. So all we need to do now is go back over here to the infinity, go to our diamond arms, and we'll move those right into there. And we got that one set. And the next one is outer diamonds. Now, this one was a little bit hard, uh, the, the, only because if you uh, scroll down through these, there's no real outer perimeter edging type uh, uh, sequence that you see like on the other one there with the uh, with the eyes or the little, at least I couldn't find one. 
and I'm just scrolling up and down, looking through the patterns, trying to pick out something that's going to be relatively similar to what I'm trying to shape and size. And what I ended up doing was you're going to see explosions out here on row 4A or 4 and 4A. Oops, sorry about that. And I thought, hey, wait a minute, that kind of fills the outer edge. And the only thing I'm really lacking there is the very outer frame. So here's what I did. I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go down and do this. I'm going to put the uh, infinity explosions. There's uh, it's row four and five or four and four A. So four, four A. And then I'm going to go over here, and if I remember right, this last out one was just an outring on the outside. So if I combine those, let's see, I'm just looking for outline now. Uh, there it is. Okay. So now, the reason I'm saying that is, is if you look over here at our other spinner, and we click diamond arms, you can see that we have a very similar pattern as to what we had uh, uh, in either either one of these. Uh, and we just have added the trident on top of the diamond arms. So the next one is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, there, there's the outer diamonds. Oh, yeah, excuse me. That's the one we just finished. It. So explosions uh, added to uh, take away. Uh, you can e also make any modifications to these submodels if you feel like uh, the uh, saucers uh, are not really contributing anything. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry, you have to keep that in for the other model. So what we're trying to do here is just make these two look similar in their intent. Now, there's a lot more pixels in this uh, than there is in the showstopper spinner that we're comparing it to. So uh, about double. Uh, in the pixel count, but irregardless. So let's keep going here. Uh, the next one is petals. And you can see the petals again are just a thicker on the edge on the outside. And so uh, what I think I did here was, if I remember right, there was some diamonds on the rows on, uh, was it here and here? No, there was, there it is. All right, so what I did here was I said, hey, let's put the diamonds A and one and two in for our outside shapes, and we'll put that outline back in it. So that we'll have something on the outside loop. We've got two sets of diamonds. So as this on this subgroup, I come down here to the infinity. I'm going to go here to the uh, outer diamonds, uh, alt one, alt two. There's outer diamonds, alt one. Uh, all the outer diamonds alt two, and then we're going to throw that outline in it again. Okay, so now we should have these two again fairly similar in their design, uh, and shape. All right, next one. Uh, let's see here, we were that that's the spiral, so boop, 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 pedals. That was the one we just did. Okay, spiral all. Now this spiral uh, for the uh, spinner here uh, actually is uh, uh, shows all the spinners go in both directions. Um, so, and they had those up here and that was a big twist right, big twist left. So what we'll do here is go down to the infinity spinner. And we're looking for big twist left, big twist right. All right, next one, clockwise. So now you can see that the, or excuse me, counterclockwise. So that's the left big twist. So that's easy enough. We'll go back down here to the infinity lights, uh, left big twist, big twist left, I should say. Uh, but everybody nam names them differently. So you guys gotta be careful when you're, when you're doing them. Uh, clockwise, uh, that's gonna be a big twist, right? Okay, and the next one is a restar. Now the restar was again a little bit different, but we got some very similar shapes here in our uh, infinity. If 
I remember right, they're down here. Well, let's just go through them here again real quick. I think we got some fairly close diamonds. If we can have those maybe, eh, maybe not, maybe a little bit more out towards the outside or towards the middle. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's kind of similar. You know, maybe we could throw something on the inside. How about the inside diamonds and the, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do this and this, because that'll fill all that up. And then we'll do the, uh, oh, let's just do the all outer diamonds too. All right, cool. So infinity, outer diamonds two. Outer diamonds two, that should be that one. All right, all outer diamonds two. And then we're gonna do uh, the inner diamond. Uh, let's do them all. Okay, yep, all right. So that should then uh, take care of, or a similar posture. Oh wait, we don't have anything in the center. Uh, so, okay, let's throw those center rings back in then. Uh, let's see here. Yep, right there. All right, now we're going to have some. Oh, yeah. All right, now what we should do here is move this thing over here a little bit. There we go. Let's see it. We really don't care what position it's in. We just want to see what color it is. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, I think that was just the star that we just did. Yep, all right. So now the next one is going to be the offset. <clears throat> the offset, the offset, the offset. Okay, what I did here was, I think I did the diamond alt. Yeah, I think so. And then I did the diamond alt up here. Yeah, okay, so I think what we're going to do is we'll do diamond alt one. Uh, let's see, outer diamond alt one, outer diamond alt one, there it was, okay. And we're going to do uh, inner diamond alt one. Okay. All right, so now we got something kind of similar going on there. We need some more in the center. So let's look up here. I think there was a uh, all our outer diamond. Oh, that's a Christmas bell. That would fill the center up, but maybe we could lose those inside diamonds. All right, so let's do this. Let's put the Christmas bell in. And we'll lose the inside diamonds. Oh, what we got? Yeah, now we're getting there. That's looking a lot more similar to this. Okay, good. All right, let's go to the valleys. And uh, let's see, these big Ys, they were uh, like a, a big uh, uh, burst uh, uh, on those. And the only ones I could find on here that looked or re remotely looked like those were uh not the explosions the petals no they were big petals not nested okay well let's look the eggs are an egg shape on the outlet as you can see the big twist we've already played with multi-petals that's got like three petals in a stack The diamond arms, we've done those, and we've got in, those in. The big leaves, maybe that was it that I was playing with. Yeah, I think so. That was just a little bit rounded. So let's do the big leaves on the infinity. And there we go. Okay. And then the wreaths. And the wreaths, if you look like the center is blank, and the outside uh, perimeter is fairly well filled. So on that one, I'm looking to fill, uh, you know, as much as I can on the outside perimeter. Uh, and we can do that with, uh, let's see if I remember right. Uh, wasn't the rings, uh, was it the fireworks outside? Oh, zigzag, petals, balls. Um, trumpets, oh, no. Oh.
Yeah, I think we're going to have to have those in there because that's going to be the uh, that's going to be the bottom of our and that's explosions three and three A. So there's three and three A. Okay, so now we need some more on the outside, and that's going to be ooh petals. There you go. Big uh, petals top wide. There you go. There you go. Now we got something similar. And then you know what? I'm going to put that outline back on it again because that needs to get lit up. All right. So now we have uh, mapped uh, all of the submodels from uh, um, the our donor or our new uh, infinity prop uh, to match up to our uh, mapping uh, submodel groups that we can. Uh, uh, match up with our imported sequences. Now I'm going to do the same thing up here with our uh, Rosa wreath and the uh, Rosa uh, Rosa wreath. And the first one we look at here is uh, arrows, and uh, we want to add uh, our uh, our donor. Um, excuse me. We want to add our wreaths or our shapes from our arrows here in the center. Again, so, and as you go through your donor uh, 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 prop, uh, you'll recognize that uh, um, you'll recognize the shapes and learn what they'll do and how they'll present themselves when they're in your show. And what I mean by that is we might put a particular shape or a prop in there tonight and you say yeah it looks ni nice now but when you put it outside you go oh man i don't like that you know it fills in the edge too much or i don't like it or well whatever blah 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 you can come back in and just by simply changing the sub models here it'll change the the look of the prop on the outside so all i wanted to get again was try to figure out a simple way that i could create sub model groups in my importing maps so that when i import a sequence no matter what the sequencer, I have a choice of how I can map those sequences. If I map them to the PPD wreath, if I put in a Rosa wreath, if I put in a Rosa Grand, if I do, uh, uh, you know, or any of those other mapping groups, those are the most common high density props that most sequencers have in their in, in their sequences. And um, so that makes it an easy way for you then to map into that sequence and have it look good regardless of the prop that you put in. What I did when I when when I got to it was I made a spreadsheet and I listed all of the submodels of the donor uh, uh, group. And in the, the instance when I was first starting was I put I bought a showstopper spinner, and so I listed all of the different submodels here on the left. And then as I started going through the Rosa wreath and the big spinner and a mesmerizer and a baby wreath and a mother of all and a Rosa Grand, uh, I tried to match up what those petals, uh, like we saw tonight, uh, the one was twist or yeah, the, the, in the infinity it's twist and here it's swirl uh, in a mesmerizer, it's spy, uh, 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 spirals and in a uh, mother and the rosa grand and in the uh, uh baby wreath uh, they're all called hook so that's from the same manufacturer calling two different things getting the same effect on different props and so you know that's why this kind of stuff is necessary in order for us to be able to move these images uh, or move these uh, sub models around so anyway uh let's uh let's i think these were medium leafs i believe i think so i could live with that uh, let's do a medium leaf uh, B. Well, Ted, it's actually uh, three o'clock now. Okay. So we're actually have to wrap it up here. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Three thirty. Three thirty. I'm sorry. Oh. I'll quit, man. I, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm off by half an hour now because of the break. Okay. I got time. Yeah, you still got half an hour. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Our uh, uh, big pedals. Uh, I think we did have some big pedals in here. Uh, we're going to switch to. No, yeah, we did have some big pedals. All right, we'll throw those in.
Oop, how about pedals big, Dunny? Okay, there we are. Ooh, that's going to be heavy. Yeah, let's take that out. Let's do many. We're just looking for something simple in the center. Let's do the middle pedals. I think those are the mid pads. Yeah, let's do that. All right, now we're done. Pedals mid. Uh, mid B. There you go. Okay, next one. Double daisy. Now we got some action on the middle and the outside. So let's leave uh let's let's leave those mid pedals. What was the mid pedals A? Oh, that was a little bit bigger. We got too much in the center. I like the B. Okay. All right. Fountain, we had that down here. Uh, that was in the middle leaves. Nope. Yeah. All right. Pedals is getting a workout here. I think that's the center rings again. And we got odd bones. Oh, we got some of those over here, I know. Uh, those were on the outside. Um, out of diamonds? Where were those things? There they are. Circle, balls. All right, balls, but we only got them on the outside ring. That's no good. All right, so what we're going to do is oh, wait, we got that explosion thing again out on four. I like that one. Uh, there. This one and this one. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and those are in two different positions. So we're going to do a, because I can look here and say this is going to be odd and even. So these are going to move. So I want two different one groups. So on this one, I'm going to make the uh, explosions row 4A. Oops, I'm sorry, row 4A. And on the next one down, the odd ones, because they're going to turn or pitch uh, 30 degrees on us, I'm going to put in the explosions row 4 And I think that'll end up giving us the look that we're looking for. Oof. Four. Yeah. 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 See how those turn? Okay. All right. And this then would be the combination of those two. So we'll do uh, both explosions, uh, row four and Okay. All right, now next one down is the outer outer rings. So kind of very similar to what we just had. Um, I'll put the explosions in again, just for simplicity and uh, 
you know, you guys all understand now you can put anything in any of these sub models that you want in order to create uh, what you're looking for. Uh, that's one A. I don't want that one. I want four. Yeah. There. All right. Outer ring is just that simple outer ring. We know that's the outline we've been using on all the other ones. So that matches. The ribbons uh, <laughs> very similar to the uh, to our explosions. And uh, let's do some outer diamonds. Maybe we should do that. Uh, we could do one and two because that'll twist for us. And are we doing? Uh, nope, we're just doing a solid. So we'll do all the outer diamonds on that then. Uh, let's see. That's this one. Okay. And then uh, wreath rings. Those are just the center rings. So again, we're going to match it. And uh, the reason that you might see the same submodel uh, or the submodel group or the same submodel in the submodel group in a different submodel group is because the sequencers called it something different or a, se a different sequencer has called it uh, a different submodel name. So it, it, even though, you know, could it, it just, again, we're just putting the center rings in here because that's all it calls for. Uh, but but the problem is that this sequencers oftentimes call different things differently in the props so that you have to just be aware of it. So just match it up, just match it up. See what it looks like in the in in the original or in the donating, and then just match it up with it. Okay, the wreath spokes uh, here are, are very much in just the center uh, of the of it. Um, I think we don't have a whole lot of spokes here, if I remember right. Uh, but we'll find something here that'll work for us. Um, don't we have some short... No? Come on, give me something in the center. Oh. Okay. No. Oh, wait a minute. I could use that and lose the outer ring. All right. Where's the outer ring at? Is that this one? Oh, no. They're all part of the sequence. Oh, hell no. We're not doing that. All right. Keep going. Uh oh. Small leaves B, small leaves A. I'm kind of liking those. Uh, no, I don't. That uh, diamonds are too big. Oh, explosions on row one. Mm -hmm. Kind of liking that. Center rings don't do anything for me. Um, I think with both explosions, it's going to be too busy. But with uh, maybe this one is not so busy. So we're going to call it small beast. Small leaves B. All right. And then the wavy outline. Again, that kind of looks like our um, uh, explosions on four. I hate to say it. Uh, that's similar again. And that's it. So now we've created a. Uh, um, Submodel groups, or we've added, and uh, I'm going to close this because we don't need it no more. Yep. You know, close this. I'm not saving anything. Okay. Now, let me get my house back up here. Okay, so now what we've done is we've created, uh, uh, I, I've imported a new spinner. Uh, it, uh, it was uh, 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 from Charlie's Props. It was a 900 and some uh, prop, 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 uh, pixel uh, spinner. And it was called the Infinity Spinner. So I've downloaded it now into our, our, our my sequence or into my layout. I then went in and created or I matched my mapping submodel groups to my sequences that I want to create. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create a sequence. 
We're going to discard the changes. We're going to make it a musical sequence. Put some music in here. Uh, run Rudolph. Already done. Okay, so then I'm going to import and I'm going to go to my, uh, let's see here, how will I do this? Um, yeah, let's go to my downloads folder, right? And uh, I've got it down here in uh, Rudolph, or Pentatonics, actually. Okay. So now, as you can see, I have a bunch of PPD read center pieces, center rings, blah, 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 blah. When I hit auto map, it's all going to auto automatically migrate over to these subgroups. Oops. These subgroups that we've already created and that are in our layout. And those then will match up with the uh, added uh, uh, effects from here uh, automatically. So if all I got to do is hit Uh, that and it automatically converts over to where they all belong. And so now we've already mapped those particular images uh, and we're going to save the mapping. Uh, we'll save it as a whatever. And yeah, load it up. Okay. So now let's go to the sequencer. We'll uh, render it real quick. And I want to go down on those two models. Oh, that's not there. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, we should be able to help maybe re-render it. All right, so now what we've got here, as you can see, both of those props are working in synchronization. They're both imaging the, pretty much the same, uh, but it's very, very simple mapping. And you get maximum results from a high definition prop by a very simple mapping. I'm not a sequencer. I don't pretend to be. And you can see the different elements that we put on that prop um, back here. Let me close this and let me bring in my model preview. So that's the infinity that we brought in all the props in or all the, we matched the mapping on a PPD reef. You know, is it perfect? No. Is it good? I think so. <laughs> so, as you guys can see, very simple to do. This is the other spinner. 
and in comparison to this one. Obviously, the, the high number of seconds. So anyway, I just wanted to show and share this with anybody. Is there any questions or anything? Uh, anybody, I'd be happy to try to stumble through it with you. Uh, I see a chat in chat. Yeah, I'll share my sh uh, sheet, man. And uh, let me get a copy of it here and I'll uh, post it in chat. It's in uh, uh, open source because I'm cheap. Um, so, I mean, open office. So you guys will have to convert it to PPD or, I mean, a P PDF or whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, let's see here. What else? Let's see. Where is that? It's in my Christmas folder. Oh, it's down here. And it's right there. So I'll copy that and I'll paste it there. Okay, there you go, guys. All right, any other questions or anything that I can answer? Just got a few minutes left. All right. Is there anybody here? <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I, I, honestly, you could do this with any prop anywhere. Uh, easy to migrate. Easier to uh, 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 map into your sequences. So, I appreciate everybody uh, stopping by today. Uh, oh, I'm supposed to show this. Oh, yeah. Any questions? Yeah, we did that already. Go on to the next one. Thank you very much, and thanks for your participation today. Yeah.